All right. So I'm going to get started. Um, thank you guys for coming. Um, I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Hadap. So there will be a little bit of a commercial mixed in here. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about multi-structured analytics and sort of what people are doing today, um, talking about some specific use cases. And I will try to go through the material quickly enough that we can leave plenty of time for questions at the end. Usually I, I talk pretty fast, although not as fast as my co-founder. If any of you have listened to Daniel Abadi speak, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so with that, let's get started. So a little background on the company. Uh, we are actually about 35 people, so this slide is already out of date. Uh, we're in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We got our start actually in New Haven, Connecticut. We spun out of the Yale Computer Science Department. Uh, it was the research of uh, my co-founder, Daniel Abadi, who was uh, working on something called Hadoop DB at the time, which was this idea of bringing together the performance and functionality of a database with the scalability uh, and, and the properties of Hadoop into one uh, integrated system. And that was the core of the research. Uh, whoops, is this moving on its own? Uh, okay. Um, and uh, anyways, we, we spun that out. We raised about $10 million in venture capital, moved up to Cambridge. Uh, myself, I was a software developer for about seven years, uh, also a product manager at a startup. Uh, I met Daniel while I was actually in grad school uh, in the business school at Yale, and that's how we got started. So, uh, so why are we all here? Well, I, I won't beat this dead, this, uh, this to death because I think you guys all know the, the three V's of, of big data, um, volume, variety, uh, and velocity. And I want to introduce a fourth one, which is value, and really trying to extract value from all of this data. Uh, this is not a problem exclusively for the internet giants anymore. This is now Fortune 500 companies that are working with all of these different data sources trying to, to find meaning and competitive uh, advantage. Um, of course, that's driven by this growth of data, but not just the growth of, of data. This, is, this seems to move on its own. Um, hopefully that won't keep happening. Um, not just the, the growth of data, but also the, the growth uh, of both structured and unstructured data, and being able to work with these things together. So a couple interesting stories that have been in the news lately. Uh, you, you probably know about the Target story, where basically Target was sending uh, promotions and coupons to a young teenage girl uh, that were relating to pregnancy, and her dad got quite angry about that. You know, how dare you send my 15-year-old girl uh, these uh, promotions about uh, diapers and so forth and so on. And it turned out the target knew she was pregnant before he did, um, based on her purchasing behavior. So uh, this is definitely moving on its own. I don't know if, uh, if it's in like slideshow mode or something. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, that's one interesting example. Also, uh, Netflix recently, it was talked about how they, this, this is sort of driving me crazy. Uh, yeah, right now I am. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Netflix uh, recently made the decision to uh, to actually create a series uh, of its own, um, a remake of a, a BBC uh, production using Kevin Spacey and directed by David Fincher. And it was interesting. They made that decision based on historical data of what people watch on Netflix. So they actually are tracking everything that you watch. And, and they can determine, okay, you know what? Kevin Spacey is really popular. People are very loyal to Kevin Spacey movies. And also David Fincher has done really well, and people are, seem to be loyal to that. Uh, and basically, by combining that data, decided that, all right, if we put these things together uh, with, a, with a remake of a, a popular BBC show, then we'll have a success. So all of this is a long way of saying uh, data matters, and, and data can actually gain competitive advantage. All right, cool. So now this is the big data landscape. This is something that the 451 group produced. I can't take credit for it. Uh, but it shows you just how darn confusing it is for any of you guys who are thinking about what technologies to use. Um, and you can see that you know, different companies perform different roles uh, in this overall landscape. Oh, boy. It's doing it again. Um, this is like, now I am, yes, but it keeps. Okay, should I just trigger you? Okay, all right. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, you can see it's a very complicated landscape, a lot of different niches within this, uh, this overall uh, space. And you know, the one thing I guess I'll, I'll point out here, um, 
uh, shamelessly, is that Hadapt is sort of in its own little place. And that's, that's where we coexist, is within non-relational and relational, trying to bring these worlds together, because we think the future of big data is really working with both types of data uh, together. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so this is an animation, so this is gonna, <laughs> this is gonna be tricky. Um, next slide. Uh, all right, so there's all these different raw data sources, right, you're collecting. And part of, I think, the opportunity here is to actually gain a holistic view of your customer from all these different sources, right? You've got web logs, you've got uh, impressions, email data, and so forth. You load all of that into Hadoop, um, and, uh, and Hadoop is this great alternative storage platform, right? It's uh, extremely scalable, it's uh, very inexpensive, relatively speaking, uh, and there's really no limit to the kinds of data that you can store there. So you've now got it all into Hadoop. Hadoop is a great place to store all of this stuff. I've even heard a customer refer to it as sort of a supervised landfill. You know, just save everything you've got, dump it all in there, uh, and, and now, now the real question is, okay, so how do I analyze this? How do I work with this? So what you might do is enrich that, do some ETL processes, uh, do some unstructured data analysis, maybe some sentiment analysis, do these different kinds of manipulations of that data, but ultimately you want to get it in a form that the business analyst can understand. And the question is, how does the business analyst um, get to interact with that data? And uh, so pause there for one second. Um, it, the, the challenge is Hadoop is very complicated, and your business analyst probably doesn't know how to write a MapReduce job. Uh, that's my guess. Um, so you can use something like Hive. Hive comes with the Hadoop distribution for free, so it's free open source technology. It's a SQL interface for Hadoop. Uh, it's what Facebook basically developed themselves and they open source that. It's their way of building a Hadoop-based data warehouse, if you will. The problem with Hive is that it only supports a subset of SQL and it's incredibly slow. If you guys have ever used it, you've probably sort of pulled your hair out and you're probably not that happy with Hive. It's going to be my guess. So you end up throwing that away. There it goes. Um, and ultimately, if we go to the next one, you end up putting that into a database. So you use a Hadoop connector, you sort of, you know, you thought Hadoop had all this potential for you, right? You could have done all your analytics in Hadoop and get away from that expensive data warehouse database, uh, but ultimately you realize, you know, it's just not quite there yet, and we're gonna move that into an MPP database so that my, my business analyst can now, you know, run his applications, use his BI tools, use SQL to interact with that data. Right? So does this kind of paint the picture? You know, I see a lot of heads nodding that this is kind of how that flow typically works today. Um, what Hadapt is all about, if we go to the next slide, is actually bringing that performance and functionality that you would expect from a database into Hadoop itself. And so it's a true hybrid in that respect. We install on top of the Hadoop distribution. We're not a new Hadoop distribution. We work with Cloudera, and, uh, and architecturally speaking, we work with the other distributions. We certify Cloudera today. Um, and that allows your business analyst to now run SQL queries, use BI tools, work with their data in a highly efficient, uh, fast manner, uh, all within the Hadoop platform. So you don't have to have that data movement between your Hadoop cluster and some other uh, system through a Hadoop connector. Um, all right, so next slide. Cool, so now zooming out for a second, kind of talking about where are we in analytics today, big data analytics, and I think we're on the frontier of a whole new generation of of analytics. Um, I think, you know, in the past we've done things like market basket analysis, trend analysis, cyclical analysis, customer segmentation. Uh, that's traditional analytics and BI and so forth. But I think this addition of all this data that we're now collecting, um, both in terms of the volume and the variety of data that we're working with, we can actually do new types of analytics. And we can gain more value out of that data that will drive our business. And these are just a, a few examples um, that, that we've seen so far. Uh, you know, A-B testing, Zynga is a great example of this, right? Uh, they've basically, Zynga is basically a big data company disguised as a, as a gaming company, uh, and they use all of, the, all of those clicks, uh, all those interactions with those games to design better games and sort of make you more and more addicted to playing Farmville and, and so forth. So uh, that is, I think, a good reflection of the potential of big data. So if we go to the next slide. Um, all right, so these are uh, some more examples. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys, you know, follow these up in, in your own time if you're interested. Um, Next Big Sound is actually, whoops, go back one more time, it is a really cool startup. I don't know if you've heard of this. Uh, I think they're based in New York City. They basically use uh, social media and sort of real, real interactions with, uh, with music from up and coming artists to try to predict uh, the successful ones. So, uh, the, the, the music industry is very fascinated with, with I think, that technology right now today. Um, all right, let's move on to the next slide. 
Um, so again, with this theme of kind of all of this data that we're collecting, uh, it turns out there's a lot that we can measure from that. Now, this is actually a slide I've, I've taken from a Gartner presentation, so I, I've got to give them credit for this. But, um, you know, this is a simple receipt that you get from a supermarket. Uh, and y as you can see, you've got, you know, the location, you've got uh, the things that they bought. You can actually start to intuit uh, brand loyalty by the kinds of products that you see repeating. Um, there's a customer rewards card here, so of course you're, you're now tracking that individual. You can actually uh, record that individual's uh, behavior over multiple shopping uh, periods. Uh, you understand, um, you know, that they like to buy things that are on sale, they like to use their card, you know, what kind of payment they use. There's a lot of information here that you can, you can work with. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Um, okay, so now I'll walk through a couple of uh, use cases um, that work with Hadapt in particular that, that we've seen in our customer base today. Um, and we have about uh, 20, 25 uh, early access customers that have been using the software. Um, I won't mention names, uh, but I'll talk about some of the use cases in particular. Uh, and then once we get through this, I'll open it up to, uh, to some Q&A. So first of all, a online e-tailer. Um, if we can generate this slide. Okay, so the business opportunity. Should I run a promotion uh, among the Lady Gaga fans or the Justin Bieber fans? So uh, if we go to the next one, um, in fact, why don't we just build out this whole slide? It'll just be easier. This is kind of like karma for me using animations in my slide. I should have never done that. Um, whoops, there we go, perfect. Uh, okay, so you know, based on shopping cart and browsing behavior, uh, what other products should be recommended before the customer checks out? Which items are often purchased together? And are there any correlations with shopping date and time, customer age, gender, et cetera? So really trying to understand uh, that customer's behavior uh, and be able to target them appropriately. The challenge here is you've got a whole bunch of different data sources. And typically, these are silo data sources. It might be you know, your web logs. It might be point of sale transaction data, uh, all these different data sources that you want to bring together somewhere. And Hadoop is a great place to do that, right? Um, another challenge, you want to be able to do in-depth analytics. You want to do predictive modeling. Uh, and you want, of course, performance because you want to know these insights today, not, uh, not about you know, the, the things that happened last week. So the solution here is, I think, you know, what I laid out initially, which is you can either have Hadoop with the database next to it, uh, and you can have the extra complexity of managing two systems, uh, the cost, of course, of, of managing two systems, and the, and the sort of performance hits of moving data around, uh, or you can, you can use a, a tightly integrated solution like Hadapt. Um, and uh, yeah, and then of course you want interactivity to that. You want your business analysts to be driving these analytics, you know, not your, uh, not your programmers. And I think that's another challenge for a lot of uh, companies today, where you, we, we put a lot, of, uh, a lot of emphasis on this data scientist, who this mythical creature who's supposed to know how to program, uh, really understand the business inside and out, and be able to do all of this for you. And I think there's like four or five of those people in existence. Good luck trying to hire them. So, you know, we try to put that power in the hands of the, of the business analyst. Uh, okay, next slide. Um, great, so here's another example. Uh, trying to anal analyze customer behavior to increase loyalty and trust, uh, allocate advertising spend appropriately, optimize product incentives, identify fraud, uh, do some micro-segmentation, uh, and so forth. Again, similar challenges to the previous one. Uh, there's a multiple, uh, multiple sets of data that you're trying to work with. Uh, there's a lot of it, too. That's another, uh, another benefit of Hadoop, of course, is there's really no limit to its scalability. So, you know, a lot of what people do with this sort of two-tiered architecture is they end up summarizing that data and really only extracting a, a subset of that data into their database. Um, if you could work with all of that data within your Hadoop cluster, you don't have to actually sacrifice uh, anything. You, you have your raw data there uh, as, as well. Um, all right, so again, you know, the value proposition here is the, the performance, you only have to work with that data in, in one system, you don't have to do this two-step process. Uh, there's ease of use uh, <clears throat> and ease of manageability because you've got one cluster to manage uh, and so forth. Um, and then, you know, I guess what we're showing here on the left is uh, the, the, the difference in time to do a particular analytical job uh, in a, in a two-step process rather than uh, leaving everything within Hadoop. And, and you can see the, the performance advantages of that as well. Um, all right, next slide, please. Great. Uh, so social media analysis. You know, uh, if we can build out this slide, I think there's another one, animations. All 
All right, cool. So this is a case where you know, we want to understand uh, influencers, uh, number of followers and retweets, but also uh, messaging content and sentiment and replies and, and, and so forth. Uh, you know, one interesting thing we've found is you know, people want to be able to uh, take advantage of, let's say, the, the Twitter fire hose. Um, and you know, ultimately, what you want to understand is not necessarily what uh, every single uh, person is saying about your product, but maybe what the, the ones who are true influencers are saying. You know, the, the person that has 5,000 followers and says your product sucks, that matters uh, a lot more than, uh, than the individual uh, that's saying your product sucks. So you want to sort of uh, try to tile all, all of that in, um, uh, including even perhaps you know, your own uh, data about, uh, about their behavior uh, with your product, if, if you have some way of doing that. Um, the challenge is, again, in, ingesting and analyzing that in, in high speed. Um, uh, doing sentiment analysis, uh, which, is, uh, which is hard in general, but even harder, I think, in uh, trying to use traditional database systems uh, and, uh, and gaining insights across that, that broad data set. Um, so we can actually go to the, the next slide. Okay, so this is a, a fourth use case we've come across. This is actually a little bit different. So this is uh, a giant uh, financial services company that's using this for e-discovery purposes. So they've made Hadoop uh, and Hadapt um, the uh, sort of um, uh, one place where they store all of their uh, emails and, and documents for uh, free discovery. And they found that it's more scalable than a traditional um, uh, e-discovery solution. Uh, and it allows them to, uh, to really um, work with all of that data in a, in a way that they're, that they're comfortable with uh, and that is cost effective. So uh, what we've done for, in this case, we've actually productized a full text search capability. So not only do we provide SQL, uh, we also provide a full text search capability, which again ties into this story of multi-structured data. You know, can I do some search and some text analysis on, on emails or news articles, uh, distill some information from that and then join that with uh, data that I have in a relational format. All right, next slide. Okay, cool. So, you know, really to summarize, and then this is good, I'll actually leave plenty of time for questions. Um, it's an all-in-one system. That's essentially what we built, and that's sort of what we're advocating. I mean, we really believe that Hadoop becomes the center of that, that big data ecosystem, at least in terms of analytics is concerned, uh, of the enterprise going forward. And I think you'll find that, you know, the internet uh, generation or the internet companies um, have sort of led the way in that respect. Uh, Facebook certainly does that and Yahoo and so forth. Uh, but I think what you'll find over time is that more and more uh, mainstream enterprises are now trying to implement this kind of architecture as well because there's benefits from a, a scalability standpoint, from a cost standpoint, uh, and in terms of the kinds of analytics that you can do across that broad set of data. Um, we make it accessible through SQL uh, and the tools that connect to SQL. So you could use your Tableau uh, BI tool, for example, to work with data inside of Hadoop. Uh, and then finally, uh, the performance benefits of this hybrid architecture. Essentially what we've done uh, under the covers is we've added uh, relational storage engine, uh, engines to every uh, data node in the Hadoop cluster. And that's where we get this big performance benefit because the, the Hadoop file system, uh, although you know, great for storing unstructured data, is quite um, uh, suboptimal when trying to, to query structured data. Uh, you, you don't have the benefits of indexing and so forth. Um, so that is Hadapt in a nutshell, and I think that's probably the last slide. Yes, cool. So I will take questions. I'm told I'm supposed to ask you to go to a microphone uh, if you have questions. Uh, and there are two of them, one there and one there. I mean, can it? Uh, you had a slide where you compared costs, I believe two slides back, uh, compared costs with Teradata, NetEase. Uh, can you just shed light on what were the costs and uh, where were they? Mm -hmm. Sure. So, I mean, first of all, you know, Hadap, like Hadoop, runs on inexpensive commodity hardware. So, uh, you don't have the, the costs associated with a, an appliance driven model. You can, you can build out your infrastructure however you like. You can run it in a virtualized environment. A lot of people are doing private cloud deployments or, or even public cloud deployments um, using this technology. Um, you know, that combined with the fact that um, you know, our pricing is on a per node model, not a per terabyte model. Um, so really, we're, we're not penalizing you for the amount of data you store. In fact, we would encourage you to store everything there. Again, consistent with the, the landfill model that, uh, that one of our customers has mentioned. 
um, you know, store everything there, uh, analyze it later. Um, so I, I can't uh, quote pricing, I guess, if that was uh, your question. Uh, we haven't publicly announced that. Uh, but it's certainly um, less than uh, the MPP database alternatives and more than just the cost for uh, support of a Hadoop distribution. So, you know, that's between a, a Teradata and a Cloudera, I guess, if you will. Um, yeah. Hi. Um, how does it work? How does it work? Um, and more specifically, how do you, I usually focus on performance. Uh, how do you transform this low performance HDFS that you mentioned before, which is not indexed for example, into a high performance database that is accessible and readable from the exterior of the big data system? Yep. So um, before I start, I will just give the caveat that this is not a OLTP database. So this is not a transactional database. You wouldn't use this for, you know, really fast reason writes. This is an analytical database. Um, but essentially the way this works um, is that we, we built a, a hybrid. Now I've said that before. I'll try to explain what that means. Basically we put a relational database essentially on every Hadoop data node in the cluster. Uh, and that allows you to store data that you would otherwise register in Hive, right? So if you guys have used Hive before, you sort of register. You're essentially defining a schema in a way anyways when you use Hive that way. Um, that data gets stored in this relational storage engine. Uh, and therefore, we get the same benefits from having a relational database underneath that any uh, traditional um, analytic database would, would get. Yeah, go ahead. Just, just one follow-up question. Um, how fast does it get into the relational database once it's ingested in Hadoop, the data? How fast does it get into it? Is there it? any latency related to that? Yes. I mean, there, there is certainly a load, uh, there is latency associated with loading that data from HDFS into the, the relational part of the store. Now, what we do is we give you the flexibility here to actually query data in that relational store or sitting in HDFS. So you can basically dump all of your raw data in there decide what is high value data that's going to be repeatedly accessed uh, and, and load that into the relational store. You could then join that with data that's sitting in, in HDFS. Um, but it's all within this one solution. So you're not moving data sort of outside of this cluster. Uh, at most, you're moving it from HDFS into this relational store. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. Hi. Um, in one of the slides, you mentioned about uh, how high is slow and uh, adapt. Uh, bring something to the table. So when it comes to big teams, right, every, any time we talk about bringing new tools, the first question the business user is going to ask, why not build in-house? Yeah. So what would Adapt bring to the table which we can't do in-house? I mean, we can do, but, you know, what are the things, what kind of things are you going to bring to the table? Yeah. So, I mean, where the, where the real intellectual property lies, uh, I guess if that's sort of the question, what, what is the hard stuff that we did here? Um, it, it has to do with a lot of that query optimization and the way that we actually take a SQL query, we turn it into a MapReduce job that gets distributed to the cluster, and then it actually gets turned back into SQL to be pushed down into this relational storage engine. So that's where you're getting that performance benefit. And by the way, if you want to check all this out, I mean, there, um, you, you can read the original research paper if you want on HadoopDB. We also have white papers on, on our website that will um, describe this process. Um, there's four patents pending on it, so that means everything's out there to read about. Um, and that's essentially, that's, that's where the hard work goes. So for example, I'll just give you one example. We do co-partition joins, right? So we have a notion of locality of where the data is and we try to co-partition joins wherever possible to give you that, that efficiency benefit, right? Which allows us to be substantially faster than Hive. Hive doesn't, doesn't do co-partition joins as an example. It, it doesn't have a true query optimizer. So, you know, Hadapt as a company, if I talk about sort of the, the DNA of the people that we hire, these are, these are parallel database guys, distributed systems guys. They're not, um, they're not Hadoop guys, they're, they're database guys. And so what they're building is, you know, a query optimizer just like, just like any other uh, query optimizer in that sense. And that's where there's a lot of hard work, particularly when you introduce the fact that, um, you know, there's a lot of cool things going on in terms of Hadoop, in terms of uh, 3x replication in the cluster. We still preserve that. We preserve all the same principles of Hadoop. Uh, we do that, uh, but we apply essentially relational database technology to that, to that architecture. I hope that made sense. If not, feel free to ask a follow-up question.
All right. So that might be the last question. Uh, so I'll stick around. Uh, we've actually got a little over 10 minutes left in the session. So happy to answer any questions one-on-one, -on -one, or you can come check out our booth. Uh,